work hard. Be somebody. Yeah. Be something more than what you see in the mirror. Yeah. Let the world be your mirror. Don't let them judge you. Because the mirror can't judge you. You judge what you see in the mirror. YouTube, this is Tyree Knight, and I'm back with another video. I'm about to be reacting to uh, this video called The Psychopathic uh, Mindset of Michael Jordan. Um, I feel like this this video is very interesting to, to look into. I haven't watched it yet, but um, I have been watching The um, the Last Dance on, on uh, Netflix. But if you guys haven't watched it or you guys don't know about it, like you should know about that that series. But um, it's about the series of Michael Jordan and the Bulls. Um, in their last uh the last year of, of being a team together if you guys haven't watched the the um the video the, the the series so um i've heard some things about michael jordan um i know in the series is probably going to go into some of the stuff that michael jordan has done and apparently there's some scra some crazy stuff that um that a lot of people haven't heard about and uh, it's just the passion and, and the mindset he has as a, as a person that wants to win. So uh, I'm interested in watching this. I'm sure you're interested in watching this too. So let's get into this. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm about to get into the video. Let's get it. Take negative criticism in a, in a, in a I take it in a positive way to go out and prove the point. It evolved to be more of a mental challenge for me than a physical. You know, and that's one of the reasons that I still play the game because I can challenge myself. Yeah, if Jordan's raised, the game is like ninety percent mental. He 10 could also physical, burn them. so I can see that. I've seen Michael come in a lot of like, times. Like from playing as a basketball player, I know. Gatorade cups and go uh, off and sit down and go most of the time, the if I play good, if I play bad, it's always my mental. It's like Jordan if I'm confident that day, and if I feel good yelled. that day mentally, I'm gonna play well Jordan mentally. Or if I don't feel good, I'm gonna play bad. Is just he's killing Bill Cartwright all the time in the locker room in front of everybody. He said some things to me that I really didn't like and. And uh, I couldn't take it. If you let him ride you, he would ride you to the moon. He would ride you right out of the NBA and out of your mind. The one thing when you play against Michael Jordan, you not only have to stand up to him physically, you have to stand up to him mentally because he will torment you. That's up. It's been on top of you for months, guys. That was dog. Then he would talk trash to you. Hope he has it. But Michael has it. Um, now times. let me let me go back to last week. You were going to tell me about trash talking with Jordan and said to remind you to bring that back up. It was a, a preseason game. A Chuck person said you need to go out there and uh, give Jordan grief right away. Establish yourself. Is that what happened? Well, remember now. Let's set this up. Preseason, as we said, for veterans, it's more. For veteran players, it's more for getting in shape and trying to get your routes and your timing done. You really don't play a lot of minutes. It was my rookie year, so most rookies play anywhere from 30 minutes to almost 40 minutes most of the game because they don't know any better. So we're playing in some <laughs> exhibition game somewhere in Idaho or North Dakota where you play most of these obscure uh, preseason games, at, and we're playing Michael Jordan, the Chicago Bulls. Now, of course, he's still Michael Jordan because uh, Michael's three years older than I am. But he wasn't Michael Jordan with the music behind him like he is now. And uh, <laughs> you like that. And uh, I'm having a good first quarter because obviously we're guarding one another. And he's going through the motions because veterans really aren't going hard. And Chuck Person is egging me on saying, tell him to take that. Yeah, tell him he can't check you. Tell him he's all that. And I'm looking at Chuck like, I really don't want to talk noise to michael jordan but yeah because you know hey, maybe i'm trying to establish know. myself a little bit so i go Once ahead talk and, me on and i say a few things to him next thing i give him a reason to michael go off. looks over to duck he knows that Collins, field, who was like, the head coach at the time that. now my compadre at tnt and so leave me in that's all he said next do you know leave me in 60 points on well, you i know we were up like 16 points going into the third quarter they i had like 12 michael had two 
by the end of the game, I had 12 and he had 35. <laughs> yeah, remember this story. I remember this. And I remember walking off the court and he looked at me and this is all he said, don't ever talk to me. That's all he says. Like, don't ever talk to me again. And even though for the next 17 years, no, nah, I think he said something he else. And I were so and he cool, said talked about this before. Fight. He said something worse. He's right. I'm not even going to repeat it. Talk noise to him again. You, that was the only he guy said that you said something different in the interview. To? That was the only guy I never antagonized. Do you remember what you even said to him? To MJ? Yeah. You can't. How can I say you can't check? Me? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, they should have checked my blood. After the game. I was a young, dumb. You, yeah, he's you crazy were for that. Dumb. And you know what, Jordan? Jordan never forgets. God, no. God bless him. Jordan demonstrated the depth of his lust for winning when he led the Bulls against the Cavaliers in the first round of the 1989 playoffs. There was three writers then traveling with the Chicago newspapers with the teams. And each of us picked the Cavaliers to win the series before game five in Cleveland. He points to the one guy, picked him in three, and he says, we took care of you. And then the other guy picked him in four, he says, we took care of you. And he looks at me and he points me in the eye and he says, and today we take care of you. Inbounds pass comes into Jordan. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Good! The Bulls win it! They win it! 92, Portland had its great season and they were going into the finals against the Bulls and Clyde Drexler had it. Great season. And there was a lot of talk that Clyde would be the MVP. Before the game, Michael says, we'll show who's the best player in the league. And he gets 35 points in the first half of game one against Drexler, including six three-pointers with his famous sort of shrug. If he wanted to do something in the game, there was no stopping what he could do. Mm, where are you going? Mm. That was so cold. He goes off. We were embarrassed about four or five times uh, of not being out and guarding LeBrad for Smith early in the game. Grant off the mark. Jordan. Oh, my top that is to Jordan. Smith now 16 and 21 of the two games. Oh, series. that's top. Another one. Jordan. Oh. Jordan picked up Thank by you. Jones. Another one. Oh, Edward. Three. Jordan for three. Another one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bro, what you want? <laughs> Bulls on offense. Michael hey, Jordan lets fly for the outside. Do runs out of green room. Hey, Jordan. Actually, not a trade ball. Nothing there. Seventeen points. Eight threes in the field. And, was a. Uh, <laughs> was able to the. That was a mid range. From From Chicago, <laughs> they showed the movie The Blues Brothers, and of course, and it reflected when he would shoot free throws. Tough shot. They don't have very many big guys out there. Not good rebounds. You got a third. That was a that was a college trade ball line. That's what. That's why I was saying trade ball. But I been taking the, the the black hour line. His, his, his feet was in there. That was that was a three pointer. Jordan backing up Bradford Smith. Oh, mm. Michael takes that turnaround jumper. Was, Bradford Smith right there and I'm right there and right there. Right there. First when hand. Kobe got that down too, just couldn't do anything about it. 36 for Jordan. One out of Jordan got 36 points by halftime. Years later, Jordan finally admitted he made up the whole nice game. Nice game thing. What's even more amazing is that the Bullets players were so in awe of him. Smith never denied the story. Smith never denied the story, and his teammates believed Jordan. He made it up. So, like, what?
So they used that to fire him up. I guess that was one of the things that Jordan had. He just, he just used it to fire him up. He needed something to actually give him a reason. Or well, not give him a reason, but like he needed fuel to just like push him to to become like a monster out there and, and to 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 like be angry. I feel like when he was he was angry, he played better. So some players that's how they deal with it. Boy, if you don't get Watch my ankles, watch my ankles. You'll break them. The report is back Jordan then, like, it's hilarious. Really no question about it. Um, I think, you know, one thing is that it's my job to go out and put the watch job ankles, on the shelf and keep his numbers down. But as the Cavaliers would quickly find, stopping Jordan is not a one-man job. Flip it on top as Jordan started to post up. Oh, Michael, the beautiful. By I want to prove to them that, hey, no matter what you do, what changes you make, I'm going to overcome that challenge. Trying to go inside, Michael. Spins, it's good. Yeah. Oh, Michael's got the ball. Oh, he gets it to the ground. Michael looks over and I can remember this time in, I think, 1990, when Scottie Pippen decided to challenge Michael one day in practice. Hodges said, Michael kind of uh, backed up for a half, half second. Then he uh, proceeded literally to score on Scotty at will. It was incredible. I mean, Scotty Pippen, even then, was one of the best players in the league, and Michael Jordan just rained points on him. Scotty had to step back and say, slow up, man. Okay. I mean, it's Michael Jordan. We all know this. Give anybody buckets. The early going, Phoenix 6, and Chicago 2. Just want to make it a game 6. Phoenix on the right. Played by Barkley. Jordan, Hicks on 22. Come on, jumper. Splash. Pull up. Seldom used during the season. Finish on. Jordan. Yes. And it counts. The top that he lost sight of Stacey King from behind him. Do me that. Today or uh, at this particular time. And, uh. I think that's what we want to do. And the Bulls now lead 37 35. Here's Jordan. So far. And they're still close enough. If he needs a block in the second half, he should be fine. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Mm. On his head, bro. Why jump? Why jump? When does Jordan gets in the key? Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. You have to. You have to like get to him early. If you don't get to him before he gets in the key, he's taking off. He is dunking on you if you want to test him. So, like, it's crazy. Like he was. He's not a regular man. Like, you cannot play him like no regular basketball player, regular NBA player. Like Made a couple jumpers early. You have to change the way you play. Right now he's just too fast. It's crazy. Not real confident shooting. Too easy. Be in the game playing and scoring like they do. Pull up too easy. I can't imagine how hard it was to guard this guy. Time. 
That's really the goal. This looks way too easy. Yeah, was this the finals against the Suns? Yeah, yeah, it was. And Charles Barkley was this close to getting his championship. Could not do it. Because Jordan was in the way. That's why he's the GOAT. So we're in the finals with, the jo with Jordan. He's losing. And he's not even taking to seven games. Always been six games or less. In the finals. Well, I think that ever. I don't think he's ever played of seven. I don't think he ever played of seven games in a series. For Jordan, golf was only one part of the whirlwind schedule, which his teammates were discovering was just the way he liked it. What are you doing today, I'm remember thinking that. Does this guy ever sleep? Golf, 36 holes. I'm playing it tomorrow, too. He would do more things and be ready to practice and play as much as anybody. The thing that I remember the most was going out and playing golf with Michael Jordan before a game. And I thought, and I'm going to be exhausted tonight. And Michael just had ridiculous energy and was phenomenal. I mean, it was a dream team. They were going to win anyway. Like the I team was, was too stocked. So. a little bit. And so you know, it gave me a whole nother level of respect for kind of the freak of nature that he really is. Yeah, okay. yeah, played okay. any street, we played cards in Magic Room to five o'clock in the morning pretty much every night. It was so much fun. Right, yeah, homie? He's like a bionic guy. Or he'd play cards, play golf, play basketball. Jordan! Going all the way! I don't know when he ever slept. Finally, after a ball game, he was just lying down. And I looked at him, I said, I think that's the first time he's gone to sleep on the whole trip. What are the intangibles and the things you that the average fan does not see? Uh, you know, you can go to a game and watch him play, but to be around him day in, day out. What made him different? I think just the will to win and the way that manifested itself in practice. I mean, every day was a battle. It really was. And it, whether it was a scrimmage, shooting drill, didn't matter. He wanted to win so badly, and, and that established the entire culture for the team. I mean, he here's the greatest, most talented player on earth who's working harder than anybody. So if that doesn't kind of establish who you are you know, as an identity as a team, I don't know what does. Michael Jordan is always on the lookout for extra motivation. In January, Jeff Van Gundy did just that. Not surprisingly, Michael would burn the Knicks all game long. 18 points in the first quarter for Michael. Mike with 27 in the first half. An NBA season high 51 points left Van Gundy and the Knicks speechless. Gundy has a Jordan headache right now. Barkley had stained a dream debut for the Americans. But in their next game against Croatia, Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan grabbed the spotlight with the focus on their matchup with one of Europe's best players, Tony Kukoc. Major storyline that carries into this game involves Tony Kukoc, second round pick of the Chicago Bulls back in 1989. The Bulls have made a strong push to sign him last season. At that time, general managers in the league were trying to come up with gems, you know, make their discoveries overseas. And Kraus thought this guy could play in the NBA. While Jordan and Pippen had been winning back-to-back -back titles, Chicago GM Jerry Kraus had been publicly wooing Kukoc to join the Bulls. Kraus was recruiting this guy and talking how great he was. You know, that's like a, a father who has all his kids, and now he sees another kid that he loves more than he loves his own. So we were not playing against Tony Kukoc. We were playing against Jerry Krause in a Croatian uniform. <laughs> but unfortunately for the real Tony Kukoc, he was now the target of the world's two best defensive players. They were debating who was going to guard him. No, 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 I got it. No, 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 I got it. I'm looking at Michael and Scotty, 
and they're ready for like blood. Like, man. We knew the world was going to be watching. We knew everyone wanted to see what Tony Kukoc was like. And we were going to give him the worst experience he ever had on the basketball court. <laughs> Pippen drew the initial assignment of shadowing Kukoc and harassed the Croatian from the opening He's whistle. He's getting locked up. It was hard to run across the half court without a ball. And, and uh, with the ball, it was just, here, somebody else get it. Tony definitely wasn't getting a shot up, and he wasn't going to score. Kukoc is nothing for four, and he's contributed nothing. We wanted to go guard him on the bench. Kukoc has called for the offensive foul. And the I was getting frustrated. And after Pippen wore Kukoc down, it was Jordan's turn. Kukoc. Stolen by Jordan. He reads it better than anyone. Slammed up. Them dudes were all over him. He had no buckets. They're not long. Not having it. I had a question from my teammates during the game. Like, what is going on? What, did, did you not see that they're really trying to uh, get you off the court? And I'm like, so what? I guess that's, that's how NBA game is played. Pippen, Jordan, and the Americans cruise to another victory. This one by 38 points. For me, Michael Jordan was... It was a killer. It didn't matter. He wanted to come in and kill you. You know, when I, I first, I remember my first game playing him in, in the Spectrum in Philadelphia. He dropped 48 in three quarters and went and sat down and, and watched the rest of the game. 48 in three quarters and sat down on the bench and watched the rest of the game. And he squelled that right away. Just like I got that. This, uh -huh. He may be, but yeah. not tonight. Michael has a, a, a streak in him competitively that I've never seen in anyone before. I, I mean, he could miss. We were playing in Washington. He missed 11 straight shots and, and uh, uh, against Minnesota, and I took him out late in the third quarter after he made one. And I, and I, I said, Michael, I'll give you a little rest here going into the fourth quarter. He said, I just got it going. I said, Michael, you missed 11 of your last 12 shots. He said, I made my last one. You know, that's the way – that's the way he thinks. The, the, what I've always said about Michael is he never feared the consequences of, of missing. You know, it, 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 I'm, I'm going to take the next one. And man, yeah, I learned so much from it's that a great mindset to have. Him and the way he approached every game. But well, so I'm sorry, but I, I feel mean, like he's so just had that confidence on himself. Like, level fair that that LeBron didn't go down. Even once. if I miss 11 shots, As I hit I one. Before, I know. I know the rest of the game is going to be good for me. Personalities. You know, it's a type I, of mentality Jordan like has. Well, Kobe everybody should have a mentality. Take 45 but, shots and, yeah. and, and not care. Like I said, 90% of the game is mental. Like before, LeBron is more of a guy that, to bring guys together kind of thing. You know, Michael's big thing. You don't have it going. I've given you your chance. I, I'm going to win this game. We're going to win this game. And I'll, I'll tell you an interesting story about, about the greatness of Michael Jordan. When I was coaching in Washington, we played the Indiana Pacers. And we were down 25 at the end of the third quarter. And I took Michael out of the game. And I said, look, Michael, uh, I know you think we can still win this game, but we got to play, you know, in, 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 in two nights. And, and uh, if we make a little run, I'll put you back in the game. Well, we didn't. Well, well I found out that uh, after the game was over that uh, he had eight points in the game and he broke a streak of like 860-something games in double figures. And so the media was, you know, how do you think Michael's going to be with this? You know, I said, you know, look, Michael's got championship rings. He's got gold medals. He's got NCAA championships. He's got MVPs. He's not going to care about the eight points. So he, he met with the media and, and, and agreed. You know, that bus is lonely as a coach when you're sitting there after you've got your head handed to you. So I was sitting on the bus, and actually Michael had hired me. He was the part owner and president GM, hired me to be the coach, and then he came back to play. I'll never forget this moment ever as a coach. That this to me was was greatness. He got on the bus and he said, "Scoot over," and uh, he looked at me and he said, "Do you think I can still play?" And I said, "Absolutely. That's why I'm here to be here to help you." He said, "He said, you know, to be my coach, you have to believe in me and believe I can still play." And I said, "Michael, I believe in you." He said, "You did the right thing tonight. You did the right thing tonight." I don't care about the points, but I needed to know 
that you believe in me. Fast forward, we get on the plane. He has a few cocktails, smokes a couple cigars, all the things you're not supposed to do. Yeah. We get back about 3.30 in the morning in Washington. At 7.30 that morning, he's down in the fitness room with Tim Grover working out like you can't believe. Now, he's 41 years old. We play the New Jersey Nets the next night. And Michael scores the first three times he has the ball. Byron Scott takes a timeout. And my, Michael comes over and he says, I want the ball right there the rest of the game. And don't take me out until I tell you. And so that's, that's fine by me. So with two minutes to go in the game, he gives me the sign like, that's enough. I take him out of the game. He walks over to the bench. I said, like, Michael, like, what happened tonight? He said, well, the guy who was guarding me was telling me, told me his back was hurting. Don't ever tell me you got a problem. He said, I'll, I'll make you pay for that. 51 points later. 51 points at age 41. He came back the next game with 46. And he looked at me and he said, I told you I could still play. 97 points. I, I, I mean, my was crazy. absolutely blown away. At 41. People don't uh, understand how good he was game. even then. It's, it's he was on Wizards. How strong it was. I mean, he's playing on one leg. I mean, he cut his finger, you know, with a, you know, doing a cigar. He had a, his, his finger was bent. He had a bad knee. The competitive will. And great. I've never, I've never seen anything like it. But that moment when he looked at me and asked me if I still believed in him. That's, this is the greatest player to play the game, wanting to know if I still believe in him. Uh, it was it was a it was a moment I would never ever forget. So yeah, that's it for the video. Yeah, I feel like this in, the video was um interesting. Even watching the uh, whole Netflix series. Yeah. So um, if you guys want me to react to more videos like this, I'm sure there's a couple more videos about Jordan. Well, not a couple, a lot more. But um, if you guys want me to react to more stuff like this, like more uh. Hey, different videos, any video you want me to react to, just put in the comments, maybe hit me with a DM on my Instagram. Um, so yeah, like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'm out. I know I've been away.